All right, he. Welcome back to Penitent. I think we're in the last bit. I think I don't think we have like we have the other parts of this mural, but I, I think that's the end after this. Uh, we'll find out. But yeah, uh, last we left off, we finished the first part, and we're just getting into trying to find stuff about the next chunk of history. Um, we had a few people around town to ask, and we had... Okay, so Sister Gertrude, Father Thomas, Elsa... Yeah. Dr. Stoltz about the Latin. Which I'm guessing would probably be the better option, just because I know Father Thomas probably wouldn't want to read the more controversial history, whatever that is. Uh, so let's, go, let's go find Werner. There he is. Hello, Magdalene. Can I help you? Hello, Dr. Stoltz. I have a book here, and I can't read it very well. If you could help me translate it. Hmm, if you bring it out for Christmas, I might be able to help. I have too much to do right now. I can't spare that much time. Oh, I understand. Sorry, Magdalene. Until later? Until then. Dang, okay. Well, he's out. Well, I guess we'll ask Sister Gertrude then. She seemed to be chummy with her. Oops. Oops. Goodbye, pumpkin. <laughs> well, I guess that's just a bed. Assume she's inside. Yes. Elsa. Magdalene, dear, what brings you up the hill? Dad was telling me your family's been in Tassin for hundreds of years. Oh, is this for the mural? I'm not sure I want to get mixed up in that. I want to pick your family specifically, if that helps. You're one of the few people who knows anything about the town after the Romans left. The Mullers have been a pillar of Tassin for generations, yes. But I'm afraid I only know a little bit about them. And much of that I've heard from others. Leonard didn't care to talk about the past. I meant your family, the one you were born to. Your family name was Caviezel, wasn't it? Oh. Not a soul in town has asked me about my family in years. I was beginning to think my neighbors had forgotten us. I'm not surprised your father remembers the Caviezels. He was sweet on my sister before he met your mother. I'm the last of us left now. Uh, Kavziel doesn't sound like a local name. Why wouldn't it be? I am a Bavarian. It's my name, so it is a Bavarian name. Hmm, no one in Elsentown has a name like that. And shouldn't you be Kavzelin? I have always been called Kavziel, as were my sister and mother and her mother before her. My grandfather told me the Kavziels have lived in the area for hundreds of years. Perhaps even a thousand, though it seems impossible to imagine a time so long ago. Were they Romans? No, no, the Cavsiels were part of the old people, the original Bavarian people. They helped to resettle Tassing after the Romans left. Built their new home right on the spot where they had been living when the Romans arrived. How do you know any of it's true? How do you know any of it's true? I heard it from my, fam my family. Do you think they would lie? I didn't mean that. No, I think you did, but it's all right. However true it may or may not be, it doesn't matter, Magnum. It matters that I believe it, that it connects me to my ancestors. When I think of the ancient Cavizals, driven from their land only to find it again and become Christians, they feel nearer to me. Do you understand? I think so. It's like when my dad tells me stories about courting my mom. I don't remember her face, but when he tells me about her smile, I can almost recall it. Yes, it doesn't matter whether you really remember. When I sing my sister's favorite songs to Ulrika, I may not know all the words anymore, but that's alright. Just as I may not know exactly how the Cavziels resettled Tassin. What matters is that I feel close to her and them, even if, even though they are so far from me right now. That's what the stories are for, Magna. Now go on, you've got a mural to complete. 
Thank you, Elsa. You give me much to consider. Okay. To the Abbey. Oh, and didn't, didn't Matthew's letter mention something about the shrine, too? I guess it's just the hand we can look at. Okay, guess there's not much in the hand. To Gertrude. God bless you, Magdalene. Hello, sister. I have a favor to ask of you. Of course, Magdalene. I'll help however I can. I have a book of the History of Tassier. I can't read it very well. Can you help me translate it? Oh, I'm afraid my Latin isn't good enough to translate something like that. Its grammar structures are far too complex. I'm sorry, Magdalene. That's all right, sister. I'll have to find another way. There was one more thing, if you don't mind. It's about the Rathaus mural. Oh, did you need more paint? I believe I have enough galls stored away. No, thank you, sister. I have more than enough paint. I wanted to ask you about the history of Kirsa, actually. I'd like to include in the Abbey's founding and the history of Tassing Saints to the Rathos funeral. I wrote to Reverend Matthew since he lived at the Abbey, but wanted to see the place firsthand. Ah, Brother Matthew became a reverend, did he? He was always suited to such a role. But I don't suppose that's what you came up the hill for. You're curious about the Saints' history, yes? Yes, I was hoping you'd show me around the convent and tell me about its history. Hmm, the poor Clares would allow outsiders to sit in the convent, even other women. Mother of Francisco wouldn't like anyone coming in for such a worldly concern. I understand. However, Mother Francisca always welcomes those who are considering joining the Order. If a young woman sincerely considers joining the convent, she may be allowed to enter and observe the sisters. Who knows what else she may discover while contemplating the holy life, hmm? Well, I suppose exploring all my options can't hurt. Touring the convent will take some time. Would you like to go see Mother Francisca now? Okay, I think I might... Because weren't we also able to... Go into the abbey itself? I know it's a ruin. Okay, I guess not. I must... Oh wait, can we go through... The old abbot's house? Maybe. That's busted up. Okay, I guess not. I guess maybe going... Going through, yeah. What, were the, what was the other person about the translation? Oh, yeah, the uh, Thomas. Okay. Sounds like we might have to go to him after all for that part. But I guess we can spend the morning here. Would you like to go inside and meet with Mother Francisca now? Yes, let's go. All right. Mother Francisca, I'd like to introduce Magdalene Druckerin. The printer's daughter, yes. God bless you, Magdalene. Father Thomas told us of your father's condition, and we pray for his recovery daily. Oh, thank you, Abbess. Such is our duty to serve the Lord and the community that provides for us. Now, what is this about? Sister Gertrude, you know your holy rules. Why bring young Mr. Strucker to me? Forgive me, Mother. Magdalene is searching for a place in the world and is contemplating the holy life. I thought observing the sisters might aid in her spiritual search. She was encouraged by the idea. Right, yes. I wonder that you'd never come up to the Abbey before, Mr. Strucker. If God is calling you to the convent, I'm more than willing to help you fulfill that divine cause. What brought this change on? Why are you interested in joining the poor Clares? Well, if I become a sister, I won't have to marry, which is far better than being stuck bearing kids the rest of my life. 
Magdalene, I do not encourage such a reason for joining the Order. Remember the Lord commanded man to be fruitful and multiply. However, I understand the Lord brings you to the convent for such a reason, so women are born barren. If you truly desire the holy life, then you are more than welcome to observe the sisters. Please, come, I'm happy to tell you more of our order. Hey, we can finally see the convent. Our small convent used to be part of the larger Kearsaw Devil Monastery. I'm sure you've been told by Sister Gertrude. However, the poor Clares live far differently than the Benedictines that once lived here. We believe that it's not ours to produce and live solely on the alms of the community of Tassing as they see fit to give. Likewise, none of the sisters have owned any personal property. We share this convent as a gift from the church. We believe that the Lord called us into the life of poverty and service. Does the life appeal to you, Magdalene? I'm not entirely certain yet. I'd like to explore and or look around get a feel for the place. Magdalene, you must not have understood me. We have deliberately closed ourselves off from the world. I won't have a laywoman bothering the sisters in their duties or disturbing our rule. However, I will allow Sister Suzanne to show you our duties. Please take your time. When you're finished, please come find me. We'll discuss your decision to join. Finally, I thought she'd never finish. What? Truthfully, I'm not here to join the convent. I'm looking for references to your mural I'm painting in the Rathaus. Well, I'm going to take a look around. Where, where are we going first? Um, the convent has many parts. The kitchen, the loquarium, the chapter house, the yard, and the old workshop, though no one uses that old shed anymore. I'll leave it to you to decide where to go first. Hmm... Let's go to, I think the courtyard's out front, it's the chapel, so let's see the chapel. This is the chapel where we all gather for mass and liturgy. It's the oldest part of the convent. And the most drafty. Hello again, Sister Gertrude. The sisters have done some minor retouches over the years, but it has represented the abbey from its earliest days. Oh, there's still a tower in the library. The cloister is still being constructed here. Yes, the tower was a bird creed long before the structure became a monastery. The duchy gifted it to the Benedictine order after the Holy Roman Empire grew. It had no use for it as a keep. These walls have protected Tassing from the attacks of spirit and steel for generations. Hmm, there's Latin here too. God called Lady Sabine to lead our sisters and brothers in 1261. Lord Kearsaw's castle was destroyed by fire in the year of the death of Emperor Frederick II. Only the tower remained. Well done, Magdalene. Yes, the first lists of the Abbey's founding date. But Lady Kearsaw was actually the one to suggest the old castle be turned into a double monastery. We added the second shortly after the revolt. Mother Illuminata thought it would be fitting. Even if the sisters were not here, some record of what occurred would, be, would remain. Here's how it's unique, a double monastery with two saints, one male and one female, to guard the town and the abbey. So the foundation of the abbey was even older than the Holy Roman Empire? Many things have been built and torn down in this land over generations. Who knows what else used to be here? You're right, sister. This mirror will be a great reference for the Rathaus. Then I'm glad to have helped. God bless you, Magdalen. How are you faring? The sisters and I have been praying since Father Thomas informed us of your father's attack. You were incredibly courageous to run to Dr. Stoltz so quickly, especially when the attacker could have been about. It's thanks to you, really. Without reading Hildegard's Physica, I wouldn't have realized he was so badly hurt. Well, I'm glad she came in useful, although I wish it were not in such dire circumstance. I lit an extra votive candle in St. Sasha's shrine for each of you this morning. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. Dad's spirits have been up, but I know he doesn't have much time. Have faith, child. The Lord cares for Klaus, just as he cared for his son. I'll see if I have any asylum left in the convent. If you blend it with broth or warm wine, it will heat his brain and prevent infection. Thank you, Sister. I'm grateful for the help that everyone in Tassing has provided. The church is the body <coughs> of God, Mag uh, Christ Magdalene. We are all one community and want to help Klaus before his time. God will turn this in for good. Uh, God sees beyond time itself. We are constricted by the present. I have been around long enough to see fruits even when I thought the devil had burned the fields. Keep faith, Magdalene. Thank you, sister. Your words warm my heart. 
God bless you, sister. God bless you, Magdalene. Here's a loquarium. Most of the Abbey's visitors come in here, but aren't allowed to enter. We aren't allowed to go into the outside world either. Like Mother Francisca said, isolation is part of our vows. Sister Gertrude once told me the old Benedictine sister she used to go out into town sometimes and even talk to men on occasion. And I am stuck here, staring at these walls for the rest of my life. Do you regret your choice to become a sister? Ha! Choice! I didn't have a choice. My father promised me the church as a baby. Some oath he, oath he swore when my mother struggled in her pregnancy. So there I was, dropped into the poor Claire's the summer I turned 17. And they just took you in, just like that? Nobody asked what you wanted? Why should they? The poor Claire's rely on the offerings of others, even their children, to subsist. My family is devoted to the church. I don't mind the prayers or the hours, and I'm sure of my devotion to the Lord, but this isn't what I wanted. But since when did a woman ever get what she wanted without being punished? Eve couldn't even manage it. We only do the best we can. I pray one day it will be different. Maybe, but certainly won't ever live to see it. Sometimes I get jealous of Sister Gertrude and even Sister Marguerite. At least they get to see something of the outside world before they were 20. Don't forget Matilda and Watchlaw, they used to be a part of Curacao too. Oh, yeah, them too. Thanks for listening, Magdalene. Anyway, let me show you the rest of the cloister. colder today. There's not much in the yard that could help you, I think. Anything that was here has long been covered in weeds. All I know about this place is the walls were added when the convent was built onto the monastery. Oh, God bless you, Sister Benedicta. Sister Suzanne, bless you. Ugh, this ice is hard. Do I recognize you, Sister Benedicta? I think I've seen you in town once or twice. Yes, you'd have seen her. Sister Benedicta is the youngest of the sisters. Mother Francisca allows only one sister to deal with the townsfolk. Benedicta received this privilege. Burdened, more like. I have to run around everywhere, gathering all the food and doing all the chores. I'd rather be inside where it's warm. What are you doing up in the convent, anyway? <laughs> Mother Francisca said I could look around. Oh, well, don't let me get in the way, then. Actually, Sister Benedicta, I wanted to ask you some questions. Do you like being a nun? Oh, yes, I don't mind it at all. It's far quieter than home, and I don't have to share my bed with my siblings anymore. I like to help the older sisters, and I don't mind the chores, except when it's cold like this. One more question, Sister Benedicta. Have you seen any mysterious figures or ghosts lately? Ghosts? No, everything has been normal recently. I haven't noticed anything odd. Is this about Sister Marie's ghost? I think it's Mauritius myself. Oh, no. Who? Mauritius. Don't tell me Mother Francisca this, but I found an old book about Christian legends hidden in the workshop. It said that a Roman commander named Mauritius conquered Tassing, but the colony failed. Most of the town was empty until Christian refugees found the town hidden in the valley. It was a miracle. I wonder if this is a different retelling of St. Moritz saving Tassing. Oh, maybe. I don't remember if the book mentioned any saints. The Latin was hard to read. Anyway, when Sister Marie said she saw a ghost, I thought it must be Mauritius trying to get us out. A Roman ghost couldn't be happy about this tower being turned into an abbey, could he? What did you do with this book, sister? Oh, well, I have it with me in the kitchen one day, and I, well, accidentally laid the fire poker on it. Well, that's unfortunate. I tried to fix it, but it's unreadable now. Sorry, Magdalene. I suppose it's better the book got some use before it was lost forever. Besides, the story gives me ideas for the Rathaus mural. Thanks for telling me about the book, sister. I won't tell Mother Francisca. God bless you. Ha, <laughs> thanks, Magdalene. God bless you. Hmm. The art studio. That's cool. 
workshop is covered in dust. Yes, this was the Benedictine Sisters' workshop. They used to make badges and art for pilgrims coming to see the hand of St. Moritz. Looks like everything was just left here after the fire. Nothing's been used in years. We can't subsist on painting, and the poor clairs don't produce goods for sale, so we have no reason to be in here. But art allows us to find beauty in life. Even Christ said the Father clothed the lilies of the field in beauty. I agree, but that's not the rule of the poor clairs. Mother Francisca considers art a temptation into hedonism. Mother Francisca doesn't let us come in here unless it's to put something in storage. I've come in a few times and noticed some of the brushes have gone missing. Paint pots, too. You think one of the sisters is secretly painting? Oh, Lord, no. We live too close together in the convent. In any case, I think it's sad the workshop was left like this. Truthfully, Magdalen, I don't think you should join the convent, even if, it's not, even if that's not what you were doing, here to do anyway. Gertrude talks about you, and you seem to love your art. Without it, you would hate it here. True... Oh, hey. Looks like a scrap from a manuscript or something written in Latin in the margin. The Mithraeum of Tassing has been destroyed by a flood. Mithraeum? This is the same word I saw in the Roman section of the mine. Wait, this might be from the book Sister Benedicta found. I wonder why it would mention the Mithraeum. I don't know. It's not a word I've ever heard before. There's certainly nothing in the convent by that name. Well, the note says the Mithraeum was destroyed, so I suppose it doesn't matter much now. Hmm. Such valuable paint left to dry and crack on the palettes. Hmm. These old badges are beautiful. I hope the pilgrims who bought them love them too. Alright, let's gotta go check out the kitchen. This is the kitchen. There's not anything that's in that interesting here. Sister Marie and Sister Usabo take care of most of the kitchen duties, but everyone pitches in when needed. Is that the grate we were stuck under with Andreas, I think? God bless you, Magdalene. God bless you, Sister. How goes the cooking? As well as the Lord wills it. My old fingers fumble from time to time, but it's just my privilege to prepare supper for the other sisters. That's very noble of you. Just as God gave Paul a thorn in his side, so too did he give me the pains of age to strengthen my faith. Such things are a blessing when compared to the pains Christ carried upon the cross. But didn't Christ die, so we don't have to suffer unnecessarily? In the next life, yes, but even Christ said we would face hardships while we live on this earth. I have chosen to find meaning and devotion to the Lord through my hardship. Thank you for sharing your perspective with me, sister. You are most welcome, child. God bless you. God bless you, child. Are you delivering something? No, sister. I'm learning more about the convent's history so I can finish a mural in town. Ah, I see. This kitchen has been used for decades, longer than I've been here, to be sure. I enjoy preparing meals for the sisters that nourish us, but I can never bring myself to butcher the animals. Sister Yusubo has graciously taken on that task for me. I need sustenance, but I feel butchering any animal is wrong according to the rule of St. Francis. Cause suffering to any living creature is unnecessary and evil, and if God granted Adam and Eve, dom even if God granted Adam and Eve dominion over them, this kitchen seems fairly simple. Is there anything here from the convent's founding days? No more than the structure itself, I'm afraid. Cookware needs replacing over the years, though some nights a ghost appears to me by the cook fire, a lost spirit trapped between heaven and hell. Sister Marie, not this again, not to Magdalene, please. Could it have been a ghost of one of the sisters from the founding? Maybe even Saint Tassia? If it was, she's never said a word to me, though I felt I fell prostrate in prayer before her. The spirit, whoever it was, rose up through the ground at vigils. Dawn and dusk and the hours when the boundaries between this world and the spiritual world are weakest. They may be the newest rivals here, but this convent is very old. Perhaps there was something Roman underneath this foundation centuries before. The spirit may seek to know the presence of God now that it rests on holy ground. Hmm... The Roman spirit might be a great addition to the mural. I don't know if the council would approve, though. It breaks my heart to think the spirit was crying out for help trapped beyond heaven's reach. Why don't we keep going, Magdalene? It's better not to get Sister Marie too upset. Of course. God bless you, Sister. 
Well, you've seen the entire convent. There's not much here. What do you think of it? I can see why people chose the holy life, but it's not for me, not without the art. I understand. You dedicate your whole life to your work. You struggle to give that up now. It's been so long since I spoke to anyone outside the convent. I'm reminded of the life I once had. Now that you have me thinking about whether or not I should remain with the sisters. I think you should go. Your family just left you here. You don't know the sisters anything. I do, though. The sisters are taking care of me. They love me, and I love them. Even if this life wasn't my choice, they accepted me. Who knows, maybe it will get better in time. Maybe. I'll try to help any way I can, even if it's just sneaking around the convent wall to say hello. Really? That would be wonderful, so long as no one found out. Anyway, we should return to Mother Francisca before she suspects something. I learned a lot today. Thanks for showing me around. No. Thank you, Magdalene. Today is more interesting than any I can remember in the Abbey. Let's find Mother Francisca. She'll be wanting to hear what you thought of the place. Well, Magdalene, what is your assessment of the poor Clares? Is the good Lord calling you to a life with a as a sister? I think I prefer my books and printing. In any case, I need to finish the mural, then I might take over for my father. Hmm, I see. Be careful that this mural does not become an idol for you, Magdalene. Just as Eve had a weaker will than Adam, you are liable to stumble on the fruit of temptation as well. Our community is quite modest compared to the splendor of an old Benedictine house operating under the rule of a powerful abbot. I can see why fewer women are drawn to in, order to in order to these walls. Thank you for allowing me inside. You're most welcome, Magdalene. God bless you. Alright. Ah, Magdalene, how did your little ex expedition go? I learned a lot from seeing the Abbey. I have a good idea what I'll depict in the mural now. But sister, there's something I don't understand. The Abbey was so prosperous. Why didn't the monks rebuild it after the fire? What a task that would be. The chapel was beautiful, and the stained glass always caught my eye in the mornings. There was a great deal of anger and sadness in Tassing that night. The abbot felt the brothers and sisters were no longer welcome in Tassing and moved on. In truth, the Abbey's dissolution was inevitable. Kirsa was running out of money and patrons. The riot and fire were simply a particularly awful and painful way to end the monastery. Did anything survive? Mm, some of the buildings are intact, but terribly overgrown. I haven't dared forge in the rubble. I doubt you find anything of help for your mural inside other than charred wooden parchment. Hmm, might still be worth taking a look if I'm careful. I worry after you sometimes, Magdalene. I really do. Thank you for all your help, Sister Gertrude. Okay. Well, that was... I don't know. I should learn more about the founding of Kearsaw. An illustration from the manuscript of the Mithraim, it was like the old one in the mine. Is it part of the history of the Abbey of Tassing? It must be written down somewhere. If only the library hadn't burned down with everything in it. The ruins are right there. Maybe not everything was destroyed. Okay, so I guess now we can go in here. My god, this is amazing. I wonder what it must have looked like before the fire. Everything collapsed. I have to be careful climbing over this rubble to get past. It's cool music they got playing right now. Oh, oh shit. I can't get back up there. If I climb it, it might collapse further. Find another way out. Oh, excuse me. Oh, hey, the tower. 
There's nothing left of the old staircase. I guess I can't go this way. These vines go all the way at the top, though. They look sturdy enough to hold my weight. Well, there's no other way out. See all of Tassing from here. I wonder if I can piece together the foundation of the Abbey and a way to get to the library. I bet I can get down this way. The roof looks pretty stable. God. I remember when the library burned down. Dad told me I was just a baby, but I remember the flames coming out of the windows. So many people were screaming and running around, I cried myself to sleep that night. I haven't seen this place since then. I don't think there's anything left. I suppose there was too much to hope for. No, Madeline, how are you going to get out of here? Toasted. Can't look at any of these graves. <laughs> Love this music that's playing right now. <gasps> Cats! Why are there always this many cats at the Abbey? Perhaps I can ask Voroslav if he remembers them during his time here. Pet the cat. This place is a mess. How sad. mural. It's worn, but I can still see some of the figures. A dance of death? Well, this has certainly been added to. Wait, these figures look new. The paint can't be more than a few years old. Someone's been adding to this. This feels wrong. Who would add new figures to the dance of death, and why? It looks like people from the town. From here, people who died. That must be the Baron. Mm, that's auto. Wait, is that? Oh, shit. Who are you? The heck? door. Whoever's watching me must have opened it. I don't like this. I think I've seen everything left of the Abbey. Let's get out of here. Huh? 
when did it start snowing? who this fucking guy with the notes is and stuff. Oh, there she comes. God bless you, Magdalene. And God bless you, Father Thomas. Do you have a moment? Of course. What can I help you with? I wanted to ask you about passing saints. I'd like to represent them in the Rathaus. I'm thrilled to hear it. The saints will make a wonderful centerpiece for the murals. No, not as a centerpiece. Simply as part of Tassing's history. Hmm, of course, I consider our saints to be central to Tassing's history. Kirsau's, too. But you know, there is one saint you're overlooking. Hmm? Why, the Blessed Virgin, of course, Mary. Many people forget Mary is the greatest saint. And she visited one of the peasants here in Tassing centuries ago. The Virgin Mary appeared in Tassing? Why? Yes, she appeared to give a message. Centuries ago, a farmer in the fields behind us had three visions of Mary. In the first, she told him that she wanted him to tell the bishop of Freezing that she had appeared. The peasant traveled to Freezing, but the bishop would not see or hear him. That's not a short trip. It certainly is not, but the peasant had received a holy vision. What else could one do in the face of divine revelation? Well, when you put it that way. The peasant returned to Tassing and had another vision in the field. The virgin showed him a pattern, a labyrinth. She told him to draw it on the sheet of birch bark and bring the drawing to the bishop of Freezing. The bishop attempted to turn the peasant away, but he could see the drawing of the labyrinth in his hands. It was the same image, image the bishop had seen in a dream three nights earlier. He met with the peasant, who told him of the two apparitions he had seen. The bishop was moved by the peasant's story and came here to Tassing. And when the bishop came, a Mary appeared to both of them. He told the farmer the town needed to build this church and told the bishop to support the town. I had no idea that's where all this came from. It's not a story I tell much anymore. I suppose the people of here think of Moritz and Sasha as their connection to this place. Mary is such a core part of their prayers that they forget about our particular Mary. But in any case, Our Lady's demands were clear, so the bishop helped find, fund the creation of this church. The people of Tassing have been using it ever since. When was the painting made? I'm not sure. Maybe 100 years ago, maybe 300. And of course I couldn't tell you the artist, unfortunately. But it's been here as long as anyone can remember. Thank you for the story, Father Thomas. If I sent you to the clues the saints prominently in the mural, I'm still considering it. Well, if deliberation fails you, perhaps you will find that prayer gives you greater clarity. God bless you and your work, Magdalene. Hmm, interesting. Oh, Baltus. We can see if we can talk to him or not. Hello, Baltus. Do you have a moment? Only one, I'm afraid. What can I do for you? I came across a book about the history of Tassing, and I was hoping you could help me read it. Oh, no, not today. I'm far too busy for that at the moment. Because you and I have our hands full preparing for Christmas ale, you see. Of course, sorry to bother you. Not at all. Apologies, I couldn't be of more help. Okay, guess we're not going to get to that.
Good evening, Magdalene. Good evening, Dr. Stoltz. I see you're progressing on the town mural. You've made rapid progress. Well, I've rigged the scaffolding sheet so that enough air can flow through. That's why the layers dry quickly. I see. That's quite clever. Now then, the council has to hear about your progress. I've been researching the early Christian history of Tassing after the Romans left. Learning how people settled in the ruins, how the abbey was founded, why our saints are so important to us. There's a lot to take in, but I've settled on my subject. And what have you chosen, if I may ask? Hmm. Let's see. Probably do the paint the Bavarians. You may find that adoring the saints in favor of such a mundane prevail of events is unwelcome. Even so, I suppose it is an important step in the history of Tassing. Remember that mural isn't for your benefit, but to make Tassing look good. I remember. Very well. After this section, there's still so much work to do. I haven't even figured out how I'm going to portray the revolt. Ah, uh, yes. I imagine it poses difficulties the other murals do not. It is strange to tell a story that still lives in the hearts of so many people here. I don't think anyone wants to talk about it. They've all just locked it away. Well, it sounds like you have your work cut out for you. I'll leave, it to you, leave you to it, then. Oh, Dr. Stoltz. Yes? Have you ever seen someone lurking around the Abbey? Or heard about it? I haven't been up to the Abbey in years, and no, I haven't heard of anything like that. Why? I've seen someone following me a few times. I'm sorry to hear that. Didn't you run to that odious woodsman, Holler Brandt, not long ago? Yes, but I don't think it's the same person. Well, if you have concerns, you should ask one of the boys to escort you when you're out. There's no need to risk your safety. You're right. Good night, Dr. Stoltz. Good night, Magdalene. Now only the final part. How should I paint the revolt? Dad always talked about how the Archdeacon was the only one seeking justice in those days. But what was his name? The only name I can remember is the name of the Archdeacon who came to Tassing when the Baron was killed. Jacob Esler. Maybe he wrote an account of the revolt. And of course I need to write back to Esler too. I'll write them tonight. Alright. Jacob Esler, formerly Archdeacon of Friesing. My name is Magdalene Druckerin. I'm an artist in the town of Tassing in Upper Bavaria. I believe you passed through our community when you investigated Baron Rothvogel's murder at Kirsai Abbey in 1518. Do you remember anything about that case the people in Tassing might not remember? In particular, do you remember anything about someone writing notes to provoke the killer? More have appeared in Tassing in subsequent years, seemingly harbingers of death. Thank you for any help you can give, Madeline Drucker. Indeed. Dearest Esther, I hope you are well. You must know how tremendously happy I am for you and Simmond. And Elisha too, of course, and your parents. It warms my heart to know your family is doing so well. By the time this letter reaches you, I expect winter will have unfolded tassing. It's already freezing at night, so I've ruinized the workshops so the inks don't deteriorate. Do you have to worry about that in Prague? You said it snows, but I always imagined it was warmer in the winter. Dad is doing poorly, but at least he seems comfortable. He's sleeping more, but Dr. Stoltz says that's a consequence of colder weather. I do what I can for him, but this winter has been hard. I've asked Agnes for help, but there's only so much she and Dr. Stoltz can do. She's not going to make it, and there's nothing I can do. Christ, I'm scared, Esther. Muriel's progressing well, but I can't shake the feeling someone's following me. I keep seeing this figure around town. After exploring the mines to see Tassin's early history and again in the Abbey's ruins. Whatever it is, I'm... Hmm. 
I'm not sure it's anyone tasks them. What do they want with me? This is strange to sting. Gives me a fright a few times already. But I don't mean to worry you. Nothing's happened to me yet, so I think I'll be safe. The only good news I could share is the moment the mural is almost finished. I should have it completed by Christmas or soon after, before the New Year at least. And for half a long last, I shall be able to visit you and meet this Simmond. Anyways, I fear this will be my last letter of the year. The Reich Post has always been late, and reports forcing snow through the passes. We seem to be stepping into a harsh winter. Stay warm and give my regards to your family and Simmond. There is always. Mega. How did this get here? Ah! Stop. It's just like the note Dad found. Are they trying to scare me? And if I don't stop, they're gonna try to kill me next? I need to ask Dad about this. It can't be a coincidence. If he's been so weak, I don't want to upset him. I just need to wait for the right time. I hope there is the right time. This motherfucker. Time for the big sleeps. Mr. Struckerin, only one letter for you today. <clears throat> the past is nigh impossible to traverse, and the heavy snow is hard on the horse and me. Anyway, happy advent, my dear. Thank you, same to you. But which one is it? Ah, a reply from Jacob Esler. Mr. Struckerin. I do recall Throckville's little case, but it's been over a decade since I served as an archdeacon. I'm no longer associated with the office of the Prince Bishop. Prince Bishop. In fact, I am no longer associated with the Catholic Church. If you do not mind conversing with a Lutheran, I will tell you what might I remember. The notes you mentioned do stir something in my memory. One of the men I questioned at Kearsall was an artist from Nuremberg, Andreas Mahler. He mentioned finding notes written in a fine hand and citing individuals to violence against the Baron. While the scope of my investigation was too narrow to look into the matter, I did concern me. Finding more notes no, notes after so many years must mean the author is still active. If this is the case, a serpent has lain coiled in the bosom of your community for decades. It may lay there still. What causes the serpent to awake every few years to stage a new killing? I fear that finding the answer to that question may draw you into its reach. However, if you're determined to find the source of the trouble, I believe you must inquire with your neighbors. I urge caution in your investigation into this matter. If a serpent really sleeps, it may be dangerous to poke into its old resting places. I hope it has been of help, some help to you. May God bless you and keep you safe. Interesting. No reply from Esther this time. Must have been delayed due to the heavy snow. The postman said I won't receive any more letters until spring. Better get back to the Rathos then. Still more work to be done. Dang, right after Christmas, huh? Good morning, Dad. I finally caught up on the mural. I can start the final part today. I promise I'll get it done. Magdalene, I'm proud of you. Thanks, Dad. I'm sorry Dr. Stoltz said you can't come to the festivities tonight. I know how much you love the Perkinloff. Ah, oh, there's always next year. 
Right. How are you feeling? Dr. Stoltz said he would come by again today. Fine, fine, I'm fine. Are you sure? Do you need anything? No, no, go on, I'm all right. In fact, my spirits are lifted today. It's Christmas Eve, after all. Of course. What's wrong? Dad, I found a note back in November. A note? What do you mean? It was like a note I found in your plans for the murals. Just a scrap of parchment. Looked like it came out of an old manuscript. Elaborate writing, purple ink. It just said, stop. Do you know where they came from? Who wrote them? Nigel and I. Oh, God, that must be Otz. He said he dropped by with more firewood. If you know something, I'd like you to tell me, all right? I know, I, I will. Can we talk about it later? Dad. I'll tell you, I promise. All right. I'll be back later. Good, take care of yourself out there. Better not fucking die on us, Dad. Morning, Madeline. Morning, ah, it's cold out, isn't it? Freezing. Makes enough makes me envy Nico able to stay inside all day. Even Andres has his forge to keep him warm. Anyway, here, I brought some firewood for you and your dad. Thank you, Ots. Uh, you're welcome. So, uh, how's your dad? You think he can join everyone for Christmas Mass? I think he'll stay in bed tonight. I'll do my best to be here. I need to keep working on the mural, though. I'm working on the final section. About the Peasants' Revolt, right? It feels weird to talk about it. It affected Tassing so much, but we were just kids. I can't remember what happened. Since I was just a baby, I never even knew my dad. That's what makes it difficult. I need to ask, but those who were already adults that night, but don't want to touch raw nerves. Hmm, what have you spoken to people while, who, while everyone is preparing for the Christmas festivities? Clara sometimes talks about that night. Mom, too. You might be able to ask them. Wojtyla and Matilda are the only two Benedictines left living in Tassing. Maybe they'll talk to me. Oh, I didn't think of that. Still the murals for Tassing, not the old abbey. Agnes has always been in Tassing, right? I'd go to her if I were you. Dad said she helped bear everyone who died that night. I wonder if she'd talk about it. It's your project, Madeline. Might be worth a try. I heard of the old archdeacon about it, too. He thinks that the Baron's murder and Otto's death are connected to the revolt. The who? The man who came to Tassing for Baron Rothfogel's murder. What about him? He was the judge for the Baron's murder. What if all the deaths in Tassing are connected? I don't see how that old Baron has anything to do with the revolt. Are you feeling all right? I think you're looking for connections that aren't there. Maybe this mural project is getting to you. Maybe you're right. I just can't shake the feeling someone is following me. You're acting weird. I'll figure it out somehow. Thanks for the wood. See you later, Mags. Ugh. Otz is right. I should start talking to people around town. I better get started if I want to talk to everyone for the perch and loft. Can we go talk to Dad right now? Magdalene. Hey, Dad, how are you feeling? Can I get you anything? No, oh no, I'm fine. You go on. Alright, I'll come back check on you later. Okay, nope, we can't talk to him about that right now. Damn. Give me the deets! Okay, so we had Agnes, we had... So yeah, Agnes Steinauren, Clara's husband, Golden Hand. Okay. Let's see. Clara. Let's go talk to Clara. Hello, Madeline. I would have thought you'd be working on the mural today. What brings you here? 
I would like to sit with you and ask how you remember the rebellion so I can paint it if that's alright. Uh, that was a sad time. So it'll help you memorialize those we lost in the revolt. Yes, I'll answer a few questions. I don't mind. I was a little older than you, so I probably remember more, Magdalene. Of course, Magdalene. We'll tell you all you want to know. I've been looking forward to seeing the mural for some months. Come now, sit with us. Now that you're all settled, what did you want to know? Did the revolt have anything to do with the other murder that happened in passing? Oh, the murder of the Baron, you mean? No, not really. I only remember that Andreas attempted to be a peacekeeper in both situations. I suppose this when things started going poorly. Yes, after Prior Frank was discovered as a witch, people weren't willing to trust weren't as willing to trust the Abbey anymore. And the Abbot became more severe. He didn't like that the Prior's death rattled his control of Tassing. I still think the old Prior cursed the town. That's when crops started failing. I don't know about any of that, but his taxes and restrictions and his attitude towards us became harsher after that. It was all we could do to live by them, but eventually it became too much. Even with all the restrictions, was the revolt really justified? I keep hearing conflicting stories about how it began. I know things were bad for the peasants, but was it worth all the loss? We would remember it, Magdalene, but the abbot forced us to starvation. We would have, di we would have died either way. We did everything we could to keep things from getting violent, but the Lord had other plans. I remember how sick and hungry I was all the time. Grandpa kept saying it hadn't always been like that. All was fine until Martin killed Otto in revenge over some petty dispute. Well, my husband wouldn't let that rest. We all wanted justice. When that soldier arrived and threatened us, the town folk put away, all except for you and Ulrich. No, Clara, I'm afraid even I was intimidated and begged Ulrich to leave the matter be. My husband alone stood with the peasants. Dad always talks about how he regrets that choice. That's why he wanted to paint the mural. Your father is unique in that regard. Most of the other townsfolk see the revolt's failure as proof that it was doomed from the start. Truly, if the entire town banded together, we likely could have succeeded without violence at all. By then, we were so starved and wanted justice in which Peter truly thought success was possible. There was still some discussion. Ulrich and Andreas wanted peace. And that fucking Miller protected that bastard. He always hated us, but he thought he was better than us. Ursula, language. What, Mom? It's true. I don't even shot Orc out of nowhere. It was unprovoked? Yes, Leonard always did hate the rest of the townsfolk. He would take advantage of anyone he could. My husband sought peace to the last. He was a martyr to us. I think the Miller shot Orc to retaliate, but after that, Peter couldn't be stopped. We'd lost too much. The burning of the Abbey was a grim night, and the soldiers coming in. Our men fought to protect us, to protect Tassig, and many died in that fight. But we got rid of the abbot, and all the monks, at least. Yes, and that is some comfort, if only a little. Are there any heroes of Tassing I should memorialize? Dad, definitely. Peter always wanted the best for Tassing, even if he acted rashly setting fire to the Abbey. I hope you can portray him in the best light, Magdalene. I'd rather not talk about that night anymore. I hope you've provided enough insight for your work. You did, thank you. I'll let you get back to your work. Thank you, Magdalene. I'm certain the mural will be beautiful. Let's go hit up Agnes. Madeline Druckerin, didn't expect to see you today. How is your father? He's not well, honestly. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. He'll be in our prayers tonight. Ours as well. Now then, is there something we can help you with, dear? I have a small favor to ask. Oh, go on then, spit it out. If it isn't too much trouble, I'd like you all to recount what you remember of the revolt. I'm really done with my mural, but I need more details. I was so young I don't remember much of the night. 
Oh, for that project of yours in the Wrath House, I'm afraid I won't have much good to say about the matter, but all right. Come, sit down, Magdalene. Don't worry about helping with the wreaths. It took me years to get the technique up to Mom's expectations, so you're better off not helping. Ha! You always did fine, Brigida. So, Magdalene, what do you need to know to finish the mural? I was hoping to ask you more about the revolt. All I can remember was the flames when the abbey burned. The part of the revolt, the out starving us out of the house and home? Otto's murder? I doubt that would be a good painting. It seems like the abbot at Kearsaw wasn't on very good terms with Chassing. Everyone but that fucking Miller hated him, with good reason. He only ever cared for how many pennies he could get from us. Brigitte, don't forget to twist the ends. You can't have looking like a Christmas hedgehog. I'm getting there, Mom. I've looked after craft on my own for this long. I think I can manage this. Yes, well, with both our husbands gone, we just have to look out for each other. Let an old woman have her worries, hmm, after what that bastard did. Dad said that Master Mahler made some mistakes, but he was seeking justice. Justice? Pa! Not only did he intervene into Tassing's affairs once, but to stick his nose in again. We could understand it the first time. He wanted to save that old monk. I dare say he saw the man as a father figure. It was proven the prior was a witch, so I suppose he did some good for Tassing then. I think Wojtyla might be the only person left in Tassing who remembers the old prior. Hmm, that's when the trouble started, I say. I thought we'd never see that Mahler again. But to come back and accuse your husband, Brigida, we all knew the abbot was one at fault. Oh, stop it. It's all right, Brigida. I want to hear everything. It was an outrage then. It still is. That bastard artist went and stirred up a mob after your husband. He got Martin killed after he'd reformed and all. Otto had cursed Martin into supporting the revolt, too, and Andreas claimed he was an imposter. Oh, God forgive me, but he deserved to burn in that fire. Mom, stop. That was nearly 20 years ago. Dad always said the townsfolk didn't stand with the peasants as long as they should have. Hmm. Well, I won't begrudge Klaus's opinion, even if he's wrong. A shame it had to happen at all, I think. I knew the revolt was a bad idea from the start. Well, Voslav could be the only one to know what happened inside the old church now before the fire. Some like to say things were always this bad. The violence was the only way, but it wasn't. I've got worse over the years. It wasn't like this when I was a child. Not my grandparents' time, either. Sure, the abbot was pitching the townsfolk and the peasants were suffering, but to go against the church? But like you said, all things weren't always weren't so bad. We fought to make things right. Well, the revolt didn't totally fail, did it? The abbot and monks left. The abbot may be gone, but Tassing was only traded one lord for another. The peasants were so angry with the abbot's received injustice, they thought they could make it right with more injustice. Then the abbey caught fire and everyone ran, but then the soldiers arrived to stop them all. That soldier even warned Peter, but nothing would stop him besides steel. So nothing got better at all? No, not as I see it. The lord is just as severe as the abbot was and threatens force at every turn. That's life. You can struggle and die to accomplish something, and nothing changes. Heh. The dead are luckier. They died believing they changed something. We're stuck with a harsh reality. That's all you've known, Magdalene. You've grown used to it. We all have. Thank you for sharing your story with me. It's important to share our suffering with the younger generations. Luck on the mural, Magdalene. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I think the only other thing we have is Ah, it is Mistress Magdalene. Hello, Baltus. Hello, Nazio. How are your inventions coming, Baltus? Oh, very well, thank you. I was just showing Nazio how a Rathaus clock works on one of my smaller prototypes. It is a fascinating process, truly. I had never considered that one man could make something so complex by himself. I'd love to create something so intricate one day, maybe a new kind of printing press. What kind of printing press would that be, Fretel? 
Maybe something with automatically sorted type that would make the process faster. Aha! You may be onto something there, Magda. Can you imagine? Automatic type. Truly an ingenious idea if one could ever make it happen. The ideas are still fuzzy, but I think I can make it work someday. Well, I shall look forward to your debut, mistress. In the meantime, shall we get back to work, Baltus? Hmm. Oh, yes, of course. Please excuse me, Magdalene. We're rather busy at the moment. Until later, then. Okay, so still can't get translation on that. Fancy Werner. Well, I guess we'll go to the inn. Well, if it isn't Magdalene? You're learning everyone's names during your stay? Alas, it appears the good people of Tassing are the only audience I will have until the pa pass is clear. It seems only right that I attempt to put myself on friendly terms with you and your neighbors. I apologize for not introducing myself sooner. I am Alexander. This is my partner, Kazmiers. We are musicians by trade, travelers by necessity, weather trapped us on our way back to Wurzburg for a Christmas celebration. I'd hope to win the Master Singer Meister Singer competition there. But alas, we're trapped here until the pass is clear. How are you finding passing? Everyone has been quite kind, and no one has thrown anything at me for my music. Considering the circumstances, I'm counting that as a success. I have to admit, I was quite upset that I had missed my opportunity to sing at the Meistersinger competition. He practiced so much for it. Yes, it's hard not to view the last year as a waste. You can try again next Christmas, can't you? Of course. Though the older I get, the less comfort I take in the possibilities of the future. Missed opportunities sting more with each passing year. Well, you have an audience here, the people of Tassing. And perform with them I will. I love performing for people wherever I go. When I sing for people, I want to move them. I want to see it on their faces. It's only in that moment that I can connect with them. That's the only truth I know. Meistersinger judges will rate me as they will, but that's not why I want to perform for them. I want to move the masters the way they moved me. Does that make sense? I think so. My dad is my teacher, and his approval means a lot to me. I think we all want the approval of those who came before us, and someday someone will look to me for approval. Hard to imagine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just feeling a little bit melancholy, I suppose. <laughs> it's the long night. I suppose you're right, all that darkness. Perhaps the Christmas feast will lift my spirits. Will I see you there? Absolutely, almost everyone in town should be there. Then I look forward to it. Until then. Hello, Magdalene. You're Casimir's, right? Here with Alexander, musician, musicians? Yes, I play schwam and lute. He sings. Are you Polish? Yes, from Kalitz. What are you two doing in Tassing? Ask Alexander, sorry. Alright, I don't have to take up any more of your time. Thanks, God bless you. Hm. Hello, Magdalene. Hello, Hans. Did you need something? Say, Hans, I've seen you sneak into the forest on occasion. What exactly do you do there? Not sneaking, just going. I go there to meet Big York. To lift logs. Why would you do that? You lift big logs to see who's stronger. It's a contest. 
Does anyone else participate in this contest? Not usually. There aren't many others in passing strong enough other than Big York. Simon's big, like Seph was, but he's not that interested. He's always busy taking care of the farm. Maybe Apollo could join us one day. He's been getting stabbed the last few years. Who's winning so far? New York, but barely. I've been gaining on him. He's growing older and softer with his council work. Hmm, I see. Keeps the man hardy and vital, Dr. Stolt says. Balances the humors. You're welcome to join us, Magdalene. Hmm. Perhaps you have noticed I'm not very big myself. That's why I've got to get you hefting logs. Don't worry, we'll find you some smaller ones to start with. Maybe you'd put some meat on those bones. Sure, maybe I'll drop by someday. <laughs> Christ, York will get a kick out of that. You really mean it, right? Oh, absolutely. Great. I should get back to work now. Until later, Magdalene. <laughs> Log. Hefting. God bless you, Magdalene. Hello, Watchlauf. I have an odd question for you. Oh? When I was exploring the abbey for the mural background, I stumbled upon some stray cats. Were there a lot of cats during your time? Ah! <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, there were. There were always cats around the abbey, but one summer they started begging for food. Persistent little creatures. Brother Lucas swears he never fed them, but I have my doubts. Well, they seem to have made the abbey their home now. Ha! <laughs> Good for them. At least someone's making use of the old structure. Thank you for telling me, Magdalene. Be well, Watchbluff. My faithful sausage. Oh, because we we put the sausage in the cellar that one time. <laughs> Ah, hello, Magdalene. Hello, Magdalene. How's the weather? We've been prepping for the feast in here all day. Fresh and brisk, perfect for the walk. Ugh, better you than me. I'll stay in here where I can keep my fingers warm. You'd better keep your fingers out of the dough, Master Bower. I didn't do anything. You snuck your little fingers into my cookie dough three times today. Do it again and I'll wrap your knuckles to the back of my spoon. I thank your Mistress Matilda, Simon. Yes, sir. Sorry, Mistress Matilda. I mean, enough dough to make cookies for the entire town. You can't be eating it all. Anyway, what did you come in here for, Magdalene? I was hoping you could tell me what you remember of the revolt. I was too young to remember much of it. No one ever seems to talk about it, and it's Mistress Matilda and Master Warslav. You two are the only ones left who used to live at the Abbey. Well, the only ones who stayed, anyway. Matilda and I have been friendly enough with the people of the town. We put it behind us in time. You can imagine the other brothers have little reason to remain. Poor old Adok's heart gave out that night. It was all too much for him, God rest his soul. I'm not sure what happened to the others, all gone in any case. But the whole thing is a sensitive subject, Madeline. Why are you asking? I want to portray the event truthfully in the mural, so I'm trying to hear everyone's account of events. For the sake of seeing it portrayed right, I'll tell you what I remember. Wait, Madeline, here. Come cut out cookies with me first, so we don't have to fall behind while we chat. We'd be grateful for the help. Alright, cut the cookies from the dough and set them aside so Simon can put them on the tray. We need a good number in a variety of shapes, so don't hesitate to change which cutter you use. You have to have enough for the whole town, after all. Oh, is it because I'm off the top there? Is that why? Ah. Making cookies, making cookies.
pretty decent coverage out of these cookies, I think. Let's just look. think we can fit are you done this is wonderful thank you you can have more if you want but it looks like we have enough thanks for helping Magdalene we better keep going if we're going to have everything ready by the procession tonight. So what can we tell you, Max? I heard the Lanskanucks came into town before the revolt and warned everyone to leave the Abbey alone. That things have really been talked out, or was it too late by then? There were some people who wanted to talk. Master Mahler worked hard to keep the peace. But after Otto was killed. Oh, Andreas, a shame how he died. We at the monastery were fond of him. Dad said he was instrumental in keeping the revolt free out of hand. He regrets not standing by him. Yes, he was. He had a personal dinner with the abbot to try to discuss things, I believe. A pity, though, they couldn't come to any agreement. Yes, Andreas did a lot of good for Tassing, and Kirsau, too. Even if the old abbot failed to admit that. He even revealed corruption in our own midst, the old prior fairing between witchcraft and the church. I still grieve that he died. In the abbey fire, I know your father does too, Magdalene. But wasn't the revolt in general justified? Yes, I think so. We couldn't even collect in the forest without a fee. Dad kept saying we couldn't live with higher and higher taxes. When I Otto died, the abbot was trying to excommunicate everyone for celebrating St. John's Eve. A lot of people thought the abbot killed him in revenge. Turns out it was that Jobs fellow. He was impersonating Martin. I had no idea until Andreas told us that night. Still, after Otto and Oric, that was too much. They burned the mill, both bastards inside. The abbot promised to help if Andreas found the person who killed Otto. All we wanted was to talk. You mean no one was supposed to burn the abbey down? Why would anyone want that? We sought justice, not murder. It was too much for Peter. Lenhart was one thing, but he just killed Oric, but to burn the abbey. But when the landscape stalled the fire, they thought they had another revolt on their hands. Even Father Gurnet couldn't stop them. We all fled to Father Flory and saved as many as he could, but... Peter was wrong to burn the abbey, but what the soldiers did, that was awful. Dad died protecting me, stabbed in the chest. I don't even remember what he was wearing, but I remember how dark the blood was when we found him. Almost black and sticky, like treacle. Dad socked one of the soldiers in the face, but another was right there, and... Uh, Magdalene, can we stop talking about this? Of course, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset anyone. Thanks, Magdalene, it's hard to discuss sometimes, you know. Good luck. See you at the procession later. Alright, perfect. 
hurt them though. No, Peter, just just vibing up there. Christ, it's too damn cold. You shut your mouth, boy. We've done this festival every year. You won't die standing here for five minutes. Oh, good. You made it, Magda. I was getting worried you'd miss the procession. I wouldn't miss Perkin Love for the world. The costumes are just too wonderful to miss, aren't they? I remember the mask scared me when I was little. Shh, it's starting. Oh, Artemis looks so lovely. I'd love to be the bright saint one year, loading, leading all the demons off into the woods. <clears throat> That's the only type of voice that'll follow you, Artemis. Ha <laughs> ha! Paula, stop that. Sorry, Mom. Christina, see the Perkin? So scary. I, I don't like it. Shh, Andreas, they're all right. They're only costumes. Big Master and Habers are wearing, remember? Oh, it's so cold. Magdalene, would you want to be the Bright Saint or one of the Perkton? Oh, a Perkton. They're so spooky. I think the mask would get stuffy, but it'd be fun to take part. You'll get your chance, don't worry. Passing has done the Perkton lap as long as I can remember. Everyone in town's been part of a procession before. Well, except for a few young ones yet. I wish Dad could be here. He'll see next year, surely, and you can go home and describe it all to him. As beautiful as ever. As goddamn long as ever. Well, at least we're going to eat after this. Oh. Hey, Mogs. Magda, what, whatever. Mogs. You made it. That's weird for a minute. You skip out in the fun. Merry Christmas, Mogs. Merry Christmas, Ops. Look, Malthus made a special batch of beer. I heard you made cookies, too. Alexander and Kaz look like they're going to play something. Oh, I hope they play Christ Born on Christmas Day. That's my favorite. Which one is that? Ots, we sing it every year. We sing all of them every year, Mags. I can't keep them straight. Ahem. Hey! Everyone listen up. York would like to speak. Oh, yes. Thank you, Veronica. On behalf of the town council, I wanted to thank everyone for coming tonight. This year has been tough on all of us. We've had more snowfall than anyone can remember, and the early frost gave us a small harvest. Folk haven't come through the pass as often. Nico, you've been short of customers, and we've all missed the trade. Alexander and Casimirs, you've been <laughs> kept from your journey. And as you, the snow's kept you from returning home. I know we've all felt the lack of Klaus in town as he's been bedridden these past few months. And yet, the Lord has blessed us each with cheerful guests and good company. Cheers! Thanks be to God. Even though this season has been rough, God knows we still have a lot to celebrate this Yuletide. Andrus, you made tools we couldn't have gone without. Just practicing my trade. Dr. Stoltz, you've kept us all in good humors. Yeah, proof of my experience, Jorg, in such cool weather. Magdalene, you've painted the mural for us. I only wish my father were here to celebrate its close completion with you all. As do we all. Alexander and Casimirs, you've spread good cheer in these early winter nights. Our pleasure, truly. And especially tonight, I think we should thank Baltus for making such a wonderful beer for us all to enjoy. Huzzah! No, no, please. Nazio helped tremendously. It's thanks to him, really. Ah, well, grazie, grazie. And thanks to our Lord, who has so graciously provided for this feast. Thanks to the man's deep pockets. <laughs> Casimir's and I shall play later in the evening, so please come to us songs if you have one in mind. Let's have a dance. Well, that's it, everyone. If I may, York, I'd like to bless this great feast our Lord has provided for us. Of course, Father. 
Today we have come together to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just as our Lord has provided us for us in this meal, so too did Christ provide us with the bread of life. So please join with me in prayer. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Now please, everyone, I know Baldus made a fine beer, but remember that temperance is a virtue. Celebrate the Christ child as though his manger were here with us. <laughs> wasn't the whole point that there wasn't any room in the inns? <laughs> He's really reaching this here, isn't he? <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Finally, let's eat. Madeline, you finally came over to say hello. So you've decided to use my full name now, have you? You asked me to. I never listened to you before now. <laughs> He's playing nice in front of us. Hello, Madeline. Happy Christmas, Eva. Till. Madeline, how good to see you. I was with Muriel coming along in the Roth house. Almost finished with it, I hear. That's right, last I heard about it, you were still working on the middle section, the History of the Saints, right? I've finished the section now. The old abbey ruins are hard to climb through, but I wanted to paint it right. Oh, but the remains of the abbey are so run down, that sounds dangerous. You went into the old abbey, Madeline, without me? Of course I did. Ha, <laughs> quite a capable young woman you are, Madeline. Till... But I'm encouraging it, mind. Well, clearly you can handle it yourself, since you made it without any problems. I did warn you about the dangers. Not that I told you to go digging about down there, mind. Anyway, Madeline, what are you painting on the mural now? I'm working on depicting the revolt, but I think I angered Agnes when I asked her about it. That's right, you were just a few years old then. God, has it been that long? Oh, dear old Agnes, the revolt made her bitter, especially after Martin was killed. I think the helping Brigida with Kraft has helped her recover, but I'm not surprised she didn't want to talk about the revolt. It took years for Tassin to recover after that night. Thank God we've come a long way. Otto would be proud of what this town has accomplished. It's a shame he died without seeing what the town became. It is. I pray that St. Florence has blessed him in heaven for all the work Otto did in his name. I'm sure the Lord has made a space for him, Evo. You know, Magdalene, I think he would be especially proud of you for memorializing Tassin in the mural. He'd be thrilled to think that you'd become part of the family. I'm honored you think so. Of course. Lots has been charmed by you for years now. I don't blame him. You've been a beautiful young woman. Mom. Let us speak with Klaus, of course, but you and Otz are a good match. Stare awkwardly. Anyway, I don't mean to keep you chatting with us older folks. Have fun and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Eva. Till. Merry Christmas, Otz. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Mag. <laughs> Andros. Happy Christmas, Magdalene. Magdalene, dear, Merry Christmas. God bless. Merry Christmas, everyone. Enjoying the feast? Who wouldn't enjoy a monk Balta's latest brew and a hearty meal? With, with whatever you put into tenderizing the meat, I'm not surprised at all. I am but a tiny part of a larger whole. Look at your belly, you're hardly a tiny part. I am as God made me in his infinite wisdom. What a blessing that is. I'm glad you're all in such a good mood. No other choice on a night such as this, but you're seeing the joy of community brought together under one roof. Listening to the laughter of families of children I won't ever have. Children none of us will have. We could still be blessed, all of us. We're too old, Boslav. It is that it's, it is. Amen. I certainly managed to bring the mood down. Oh, it's not your fault, Magdalene. When you've been through a lot and happen to reminisce you sometimes end up here everyone has regrets but you live with them even I didn't find anyone to marry the work I do now is precious solace is where you find it well, at least hope you find yourself continuing to have a pleasant night bless you Magdalene enjoy the feast
Merry Christmas, Magdalene. A festive yuletide to you, my dear lady. Merry Christmas to you all. How are you enjoying the feast? What a stirring speech made by that big York. His wonderful voice is just perfect for speeches. I don't think he likes giving speeches. A shame. We were just discussing the history of Christmas Tide, Magdalene. It's most intriguing. Oh, do continue. I'm eager to learn more. It is a most sacred season. Without Jesus, how could we be brought out of sin? As Malachi said, Jesus is the son of righteousness, a symbol for the dawn of a new era. Ah, the sons. The Romans also celebrated a sun god, Sol Invictus, right around this very time of year. Emperor Aurelian even founded the Imperial Cult, in which Sol played a prominent role in her Mithraic mysteries. What's a Mithraic mystery? It's nonsense. Jesus is not some sort of pagan sun god. As St. Augustine said, it is the most fitting time to celebrate the nativity of Christ. He who bent low and lifted us up chose the shortest day, yet the ones whence light begins to increase. <clears throat> there are compelling similarities between these acts and ritual celebrations. Food for thought, see. Ridiculous. I find the practical matters of it most enlightening. Christmas tide is the last feast before the cold of deep winter. Our lives are so dependent on the progress of seasons. Cattle are slaughtered to lower the cost of feeding them. We indulge in their sacrificial meat before the months of starvation. And so they keep us alive. Just so. In Genoa, we remember the Roman roots of Christmas, Saturnalia, as it was called, the winter solstice. Many of the traditions and rituals are borrowed from the Romans. Rome may have had the first celebrature, but the Arian heresy soon thereafter was a severe misstep. I've heard very little about the Arian heresy. It was a doctrine that stated Jesus the Son was distinct from God the Father. Arius argued that they are not the same in essence, co-equal and co-eternal. The unfortunate Emperor Constantine put an end to this grievous error. And we're fortunate Charlemagne was crowned on Christmas Day, else his popularity may not have recovered. Ah, you are evergreen. Lighten your mind, Werner. I rather enjoy your Christkindl, the gift bringer, a most joyous idea. And so do the children. They love getting gifts. As do I. <laughs> Ultimately, however, true. The various elements of Christmas, it is good because it unites the community. That is why we are here, to feast and be merry. And partake in the most splendid beer that has been brewed. Salutations to you, my friend Baltus. Indeed, it is truly excellent. Well done, Baltus. I admit, it is most palatable. It is indeed Christmas, Steph. Ah, you're too kind. There's plenty to improve. Then I will help you hone the formula. How about you, Madeline? I could help if Baltus so wishes. We shall see when the new year comes. I may need some assistance. Oh, what a profitable company we would be. You intend to stay in Tassing even after the snow is melted? I am in no rush. The bonk can survive for a moment without me. But my friend Baltus here may be less so. <laughs> I have done very well so far. Thank you. It's the season for giving, is it not? Won't you be in trouble for delaying your return even further? Eh, uh, trouble. What does a tiny bit of trouble matter to Nazio Agostini? Becoming stuck in Tassing is surely an act of God. I cannot control the weather. I am where I am meant to be. Say, Alexander and Casimir's play such delightful songs. Perhaps a dance later, hmm? hmm. We'll see. Later, gentlemen. Yep, it is the feast. Haven't we talked to yet? Is that Veronica? I guess we talked to Alexander. Ah, Mr. Smidlin, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Alexander. Merry Christmas, Casimir. Is enjoying the night? Very much so. The cookies, especially, I haven't had such wonderful gingerbread in ages. We were just setting up to perform. Did you have a particular song in mind you want us to play? Between the two of us, we know all the Christmas songs between here and Spain. Hmm. Hmm, let's do that one. However, heaven above to earth I come. One written by Martin Luther. I don't oppose, but are you sure we ought to? Why not? It's Christmas. Aha, if you say so. Once Kaz and I play we prepared, we'll be sure to play that one. Merry Christmas, everyone. Since it is Christmas, Kazmiris and I want to share a special song with all of you in spirit of giving. Please enjoy. Und das 
The people just vibing with. For a second, because of the animation of the like beer sloshing out of that guy's mug, I thought that was a sausage. <laughs> just you know, casually having a sausage in, in your your beer stein. <laughs> no, it's just it's just the sloshy animation. That's a nice little song. Nice. Good stuff. I like these two. Thank you, thank you truly. Please return to your drinks. We'll be pl playing all night. Merry Christmas. Hello, Madeline. Happy Christmas to you. Good evening, Madeline. Merry Christmas, you two. Ulrika, Andreas, say hello to Mr. Struckerin. Hi! Hi. Oh, Andreas, don't be shy. You know Mr. Madeline. Sorry, Madeline. He's still a bit quiet. That's all right. There's a lot of commotion here tonight. Yes, <laughs> I think Andreas is still a little overwhelmed after the perch unlocked. <laughs> Virgin used to scare me when I was little, too. Really? Oh, yes. I hid behind my ha dad's legs for a long time. I couldn't even look at them. <laughs> it's all right to be scared, Andreas. I learned that a long time ago. I still don't like them. I like them. Fuzzy heads. Shh, Alverka, you can look at the mask later. How'd you like York's speech, Magdalene? A good reminder of everything we still have. We all needed to hear it. For Paul, putting it up to it at the last moment, it was well done. Well, Werner insisted someone on the council make a speech. I didn't particularly want it to be me. But York did it justice. You can always count on him to speak from the heart, especially if you drinks in. Truthfully, I think much of the town needed some encouragement tonight. Tassing hasn't had such a hard season since... Since the revolt. Yes. I'm sorry, it's Christmas. We shouldn't speak of such sad times. Let's toast to better days, then. Cheers to that. Although there is an old Latin proverb my dad used to say to me. Ignis aurum fort miseria fortis viros. Fire is the test of gold. Misery is the proof of strong men. Yes, precisely. There's no question the revolt left Tassing worse off. But seeing the town now gives me hope. You're an artist, Madeline. I think you can see it, too. I... I think I do. Things seem brighter for Tassing somehow. Yes, those miserable days give us the resilience we need to push ahead to make things better. The next generation, like you or Jutta, and the twins, you saw what it was like to fight for ourselves. To stand up to tyranny, even at the cost of losing our homes and lives. To be honest, most knights are grateful for the revolt. Really? Oh yes. You wouldn't remember, but life was already terrible before that night. The revolt burned away the dead wood that rot Tassing for decades. God knows my father was an evil man. His death released me from my years of fear. The revolt gave me the courage to face him, to become better than him. I think something of the same thing happened when the abbey was destroyed. If things had gone on as they always did, well, I doubt we'd be having such a Yule feast tonight. The cost was high, but it resulted in just as much joy as grief. I hadn't thought about it that way. Because of the revolt, I could marry Paul and we could supply grain to peasants at a fair price. Our children grow up without the fear that ruled over my life as I got older. No moment in life is entirely good or bad, Madeline. What matters now is how we choose to see it. That's a wonderful way to look at it, Anna. Thank you. Oh, well, it's something I learned from more of Father Thomas's sermons. I took it to heart when my father died. Don't forget to take some time to have fun tonight, all right? Mommy, I want another cookie. Don't yell, sweetheart. <laughs> Excuse us, Madeline. Seems we have cookies to fetch. Of course. Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas, Madeline. Uh, looks like we just have Veronica left. Cookies! We did pretty good with the cookie cutting. I think we got... Like, I think... I could have gotten, like, one more, but we got, like, we got an achievement for it. So I'm guessing we did... We did a pretty damn good job. Oh, good. Smokey's here. I just noticed him in the background there. 
Merry Christmas, Padlin. Enjoying the celebration. It's wonderful to see everyone together in such high spirits. Isn't it? Even Grandpa's enjoying himself. This winter's been difficult for his gout. The cold makes his joints seize. I told him he didn't have to come to the Perkton Lough, but he insisted. I haven't missed one Yule procession in my life, and I'll be goddamned if some snow stops me. Ah. Oh, God, we know, old man. Anyway, like York said earlier, it's nice to have a night of good company and cheer. Thank you for mentioning my father in your speech, York. He'll be glad to know he was missed. You're welcome, Adolin. Klaus is a good man, and we all miss him as part of the community. To be honest, I didn't expect to make a speech tonight. I just thought about what happened in town this year. Oh, really? Werner kept insisting that someone make a speech, so... Paul said I was the most charismatic of anyone on the council. He said that? Well, he said I would make the least amount of people angry over it. Paul just said it was my charisma. I thought it was fitting for the season, York. Paul did too. Told me so himself. Oh, uh, thanks. That's good. I'm glad people liked it. Big York is great. I do like him as well. To be honest, I never thought I'd be someone people in Tassing listen to. But you've always been part of the town council. We didn't always have a council, though. <laughs> what, the, the beard? <laughs> Big red beard dude. <laughs> checks out. <laughs> I love my father, but what he did. I thought I had doomed the town. The whole affair was the abbot's fault. Peter did the right thing. By pushing back against the abbot? Yes, but he chose to burn the abbey, too. I always went along with him because he was my dad. He had to be right. The night was the first time I thought any different. I learned that night that you can fight for something right and still choose the wrong way to do it. <laughs> it is very similar, yeah. <laughs> I swore I would never let that happen again. The revolt broke down everything I thought I knew about Tassing about myself. But it made a lot of things better for Tassing, and that makes me hopeful. What do you mean? Well, our new lord is strict, but he made a deal with us. The council lets us govern ourselves. As much as I was grumbling earlier today, York is right. Life changed in Tassing, and even though the first few years were hard, we're better for it now. No abbot looking down on us, making stupid laws as he sees fit. Our lord lives days away. As long as we pay our taxes, we're left alone. It's a better life for Artemis and Apollo than we had. Don't you talk ill of my son, boy. He gave you everything he had. God rest his soul. I know, Grandpa. Choosing to live differently than your dad was brave. I think you and the rest of the council have done a good job. Thank you, Magdalene. I've done the best I can do right by the town and dad. You're a son. You've done him proud, boy. Thanks, Grandpa. Anyway... Going for another pint. Anyone else? Yes, yes, bring a pitcher. You've had enough, Grandpa. Your humors might become unbalanced. Another for me, York. Magdalene? I'll get myself another later, thanks. All right, we'll see you later then, Magdalene. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, can we talk to just Big York? Okay, that's a new one. Hey, Magdalene, sorry to bother you during the feast. Oh, hello, York. Did you need something? Well, all the chatter around the revolt earlier had me thinking. You're nearly done with the mural, aren't you? Last time you talked with the council, you said you were working on the final portion, painting the revolt. I don't mean to nag during the peace, though. That's Veronica's job. I should have done it. I should have it done soon. I've been listening to people around town talk about the revolt, so I can get a better idea of how to paint it. Everyone has a different idea of how that night happened. But I think I finally settled on how I wanted to depict it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'll honor what the peasant stood for, definitely. <clears throat> That's a good perspective. It shows what happened without being too detailed about, well, what happened. I'm sure everyone will love it. Klaus would be proud of the design you picked. He will like that especially. Anyway, I'll get out of your way. You've got a few better things to do. And I think Otz was looking for you, too. He always is. <laughs> I think I'll actually go home for the night. I've had enough of Otz's flirting. I should check in on my dad. Tell him hello from all of us, all right? I will. Good night, York. Good night, Madeline. Beth. 
things better be fine with our dad. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Amelie's here. She better not be having another vision. That's always bad news. God bless you and Merry Christmas, Magdalene. Oh, Merry Christmas, Sister Amelie. Or are we bothering you with the noise next door? No, not at all. Hearing people celebrating Christ's birth brings me great joy. Christmas tide should be a heartening time of year for us all. I've enjoyed seeing everyone feeling better about the future, especially after all tasking has endured. People here have suffered greatly, but we must always find hope in the midst of despair. It's fitting to celebrate Christ's birth on days with so little light and warmth. People need Christmas in the depth of the winter to remind them that spring will return. And we will all have a chance to live again. Madeline, who is that? Someone who's been following me. Ah, oh, fuck. Please excuse me, Sister Emily. I need to check in on my father. Of course. God bless you. Thank you, Sister. Well, they've clearly been around a while. They had a hell of a beard. Oh, man. Oh, man. Fucking hell. Oh, thank God. Magdalene, is that you? What's the matter? Someone was standing near the house. The door was open. I was afraid something might have happened to you. I'm sorry I didn't hear anything. I don't sleep most of the day. Most of the evening, too. I'm worried about you, Magdalene. You're worried about me? You're working too hard. I know you're taking care of me. It takes up so much of your time. I know how hard you're working on the mural. I wanted to finish it before Christmas. I know. Down near an impossible task given the size of that Rothhouse. Well, maybe you just did. Maybe if you did just one wall. <laughs> You're not going to make it, Magdalene. That's not true. I've been getting worse since Advent, winding down like Baldus's clock. These days I'm lucky if I can stay awake a few hours. It's alright. This is just life. I'm glad I'm going before you, even if it's sooner than either of us would like. I've already seen too much death in my time. I just wanted to show you what I could do. I wanted you to be proud of me. I have been. Every day of your life. You never needed to prove anything to me. I wish I could stay to see the mural when you finish it, but I don't need to. I know it will be more beautiful than anything these old hands have ever made. Don't say that. It's true, though. I mean, I got along all right. But I always knew you would surpass me before long. You can already see things like I never could. See things and make them real. I don't know if that's true. It is. Whether I die tonight or tomorrow or the next day, I'm not going to be here much longer. One morning you're going to wake up and you'll have to do things for yourself. Love things for yourself, and you'll have to share it with the world. Love is the only reason to do anything in this life. All this talking, too much. Did you bring you something to eat? Of course, Dad, you haven't eaten all day. And I missed a Christmas feast, too. I can't believe no one brought me a cookie. I'll go get some soup. Oh, man. Better not be some fucker down here. God damn it. Klaus. I'm sorry, Klaus. Just about everything. Here. Here. I've been trying to keep Madeline safe. I've been trying to figure it out this whole time. Wait. Is this fucking Andreas? After the fire, it's all I can think about. That and them. They never left me. They're all still there, all in the dance of death. The Baron, Piero, Ferenc, Martin, Peter, Otto, Kaspar, August, and now you. <laughs> I was really confused there for a second, Ben. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Dad?
Oh, God, it's you. Who are you? What do you do to my father? Magdalene, it's all right. It's all right. I'm sorry. I forgot my manners after all these years. And you've likely forgotten my face or what it once was. Oh, shit, it is! Magdalene, this is Andreas Mahler. Back from the dead. The earliest memories I have is you running into a burning library. I'm uh, sorry. I don't understand. No one could have survived that. Maybe I shouldn't have, but I did. I don't understand, Andreas. Where have you been all these years? Hiding from the world. In the ruins, mostly. Sometimes in the woods when it was warm. Stealing bread from Gret, stealing books from you. Oh, so I wasn't going crazy. <laughs> It's the only thing that cuts my mind from forgetting what words are. Wait, how did you survive the fire? With some difficulty. I grabbed as many books as I could and threw them into the scriptorium. When the smoke got too thick, I started to black out. The next thing I remember was Kaspar pulling me into the crypt. Your apprentice, the boy? You sent him back to Salzburg. He didn't leave. He waited in the woods and watched what was happening. When he saw me in the window of the library, he ran into the crypt to save me. And he did. But he saw I was trying to save the books, and... He went back in. I couldn't stop him. I was barely conscious. He never came back out, Klaus. When I woke up, everyone was dead or gone. I couldn't face any of you. I couldn't go back to Sabine, that empty house. So I hid. You painted over the Dance of Death in the Abbey. Turns out I had a reason to keep painting. I'm sorry if I scared you. No one's come to the Abbey for years. I thought I was safe there. I was afraid to talk to you. Afraid to talk to anyone. Did you leave us those notes, the ones the purple writing? Ah. Uh -huh. No, those were written by a different occult hand. One that does not want you to finish your mural. One that has killed and may kill again to stop you from telling Tassing's history. Tassing's history? Why? Because Tassing's real history is at odds with the story we've all been told. It stood covered bit by bit, layer by layer, until it could no longer be seen, but it's still here. It's always been here, hidden beneath our feet. And it's still protected, haunted by the specter of death that's hung over this place for generations. The Thread Puller. Thread Puller? Beneath our feet? What are you talking about? The person who attacked her father is the same person who manipulated someone into killing Otto Zimmerman. And Lawrence Rothvogel. Yes, and they traveled through the Roman aqueducts that connect Tazing and Kyrsau. It's a network of tunnels I've become quite familiar with. And I've seen the ghost that haunts them, that can squeeze through the tiniest opening. I never, I've seen it bend itself in half to reach places I could never follow. I've traveled every inch of the aqueduct in the old city, and there's one place I've never found. The lair where the thread puller retreats to, the ancient Roman temple that's determined to hide from view. The Mithraim, you found it? No, but I mapped out a darkness between the collapsed tunnels. And I believe I know how to get there. Come with me, I'll show you. Now? The thread puller becomes aware of what we're doing. Well, I don't know what they'll do. We need to act quickly. Will you be alright? Yes, I'll be fine. Protect my daughter, Andreas. With my life, Klaus, I promise. Alright, let's find the Mithraim. Fuck yeah, I'm glad we're finding this thing. The Wrath House, what are we doing here? When the men dug the foundation, they found Roman ruins that had been buried over time. Lucky never wasted stones, so we used Roman wall as one of the cellars. There's a way... Inside. To a hidden place. Yes? Alright, into the Rathskeller. I, I kind of wondered, when we saw the map of the place, and like where the Mithraeum supposedly was, I kind of wondered if it was something with the Rathhouse. All right, that wall is different. Does that mean this is the place? No, it's two-sided, new and old. This was above ground once. It carried water. Look. Oh, yeah, and there's an inscription there. All right, I think I can make it out. Cornelius goes to the bath today and completes the sixth step in the Mithraeum. Yes, you see? No, I most certainly do not see Andres. Well, here.
This is the aqueduct. The aqueduct carries water to the bath, so you think this will take us to the Mithraim? Exactly. You seem quite confident. We know it exists. I know where it is not. I believe this is the only place it could be. It must be near the baths. Well, you already smashed a hole in the wall, so I suppose you might as well look. After you, please. Alright. Into the aqueducts. Man, the rest of looks like he's seen some shit. That fucking walk. Jeez. Nice bathhouse. This part of the tunnel has collapsed. We're not getting into the Mithrium this way. I think... Yes, Casper and I found a collapsed section of the aqueduct near town. We didn't find out what was on the other side. I wouldn't let him explore it. We should have taken more care with him. Andreas, we can't do anything about that now. Yes, of course. Oops. Decoration. This must have been the baths. It doesn't look like there's a way through. Silt. All the floods kept carrying it down here. Hundreds of years of floods. What if we can't get through? What if it's buried forever? It's too early to get this discouraged. Let's keep looking. Well, there wasn't much else that direction to look at, I guess. Oh, this direction. Okay. More stairs down? Would be something be below the baths? A hypocost. They use warm air to heat the rooms above. Roman colonies in the north often had them. Let's hope those have them filled with silt as well. Damn, we're really getting down here. Do you know where we're going? These pillars just kind of go in all directions. Andreas, could you look that way? I think I'm going to try exploring ahead. Of course. How could you abandon your work, Andreas? I thought you were a true artist, master of your craft. But all you created was misery. Goddamn spooky aqueduct ghosts. The only thing more pitiful than watching you work in Escatorium was your love of that dying art. You couldn't leave a good thing well enough alone, could you? Master, why did you send me back to the flames? <coughs> oh, man. Oh, jeez. No. No, this isn't right. I can't be here right now. How did I get here? Andreas. You're still here. Yes, for a little longer. You're leaving? I'm the last vestige of reason that once ruled this court. When it goes, I will go with it. Who will rule the city if you leave? No one. You must leave this place forever, Andreas. You must abandon it for good. But how? What can I do? I don't even know how I got here. This was once a place of refuge for you, Andreas. But it has become a prison. A prison you constructed to protect yourself. From what? From pain, from risk, from life itself. But I can't stay here. I have to help Magdalene. How do I get out? Andreas, you are the architect. I'll help you as best I can. You are the only one who could answer that. Hmm, out of the labyrinth. Hello, Andreas. Is that you, Sabine? Yes, of course. I'm still here. Part of me will always be here with you. We haven't talked in so long. Why? Uh, everything fell apart. That doesn't mean we couldn't have put it back together. I didn't know how to. No one does. I wish you'd given us another chance. Too late. It may be too late for us, but it's not too late for you, Andreas. It's not too late for Magdalene. Yes, Magdalene. We have to help her. 
You can, Andreas, but you have to leave this place behind for good. I know I can. I will. You will. Thank you, Sabine. Will I ever see you again? Not in this place. But maybe someday in a better place. In a better dream. Master Andreas? Oh. Kaspar. It's really you. It's so good to see you again, Master. I just wanted to help you, Master Andreas. You couldn't think straight. You shouldn't blame yourself anymore. What should I do? Get back to life, I think. I wish I knew how. Help Magdalene, Master. And she'll help you. All right, Kaspar. Thank you. Thank you for everything you taught me. Aw. Wait, what happened? This, this was the way out. Before I start talking to Kaspar, I know this was the way out. Your mind is fighting itself, Andreas. It remembers the pain of life. It's trying to protect you from it. Beatrice? Yes? I thought you were gone. You brought me back. Oh. So, what do I do now? Keep going. Too. It's been so many nights, so many years without seeing your face. I thought I had forgotten it. I knew you were still here, though. Quietly waiting for me. I can't change the past, can't cover it up. It's always there under the surface, no matter how I try to bury it, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. I... It's alright. What? It's alright, Danny. It is? You don't have to hide here anymore. What about you and Kaspar and your mother? We're not really here. And there are people who need you. What if I can't help them? I don't know, Daddy. I'm too little. I think you have to figure that out on your own. Of course. You're right. Thank you. I love you, Daddy. I love you, too. Good night, August. Good night. Ah. He shifted again in the walls. It's still trying to protect you. No. It's not? No, I mean, no, I don't have to do this. This is my mind, my maze, and I'm leaving. Good. This next part might be confusing. What? I don't understand. I don't understand any of this. Why are you holding the maze? Two things are merging in your mind. You and... There are layers to everything, even our memories. Over time, the foundations become buried. We can no longer recall how we got here, no longer recall what came before. And what came before? Our lady, watching over the labyrinth as I watch over you. And even this has roots that reach deep into the past. There is not always a lady to watch over the labyrinth, but there was a labyrinth. What? I don't understand. Sister Amelie? Is this real? Am I still in my mind? You are here with me. And we are here in spirit. Are we still in the ruins? We are in the tabernacle, the heart of the labyrinth. Your spirit was wandering and the Lord brought you here. I don't understand. How did you leave your cell? I have not. We are only here in spirit, Andreas. Am I having a vision? I know it is confusing. I'm not even sure of my own visions. But if you are here with me, it is the will of the Lord. Andreas? Sister Amelie? 
What are you doing here, sister? This is the center of the labyrinth, the tabernacle. It is where the Lord sends my spirit to do his will. He has also guided your spirits here. There must be a purpose to it. Sister, we're looking for the Mithraim. Is this it? Mithraim? No. This is the tabernacle, not a place of wood and stone, but a place of spirit. The Lord has called me, to, called me to this place for many years. He has always made his will known to me. Sister, how does your spirit come to this place? Through the door between life and death. When my spirit hears the call, it descends through my grave. Here the Lord tells me what messages I must bear and to whom. You deliver messages? Yes, once long ago I was a scribe. I copied many works of the great church doctors, Origen in particular. But that all ended with the fire, it ended my, with my life. Wait. I thought I had given up the pen forever until the visions returned. Damn! Amelie? What? No. When fire took the, my abbey, I couldn't save my sisters, not one. All I could grab was a single book and bolt of cloth. I couldn't understand why God had spared me alone. But he showed me. God had a higher purpose for me, for my hand. Father Thomas explained it to me. He makes everything clear. He tells me what I must do, what the Lord wills me to do. It was you, this whole time you wrote the notes. I found them on my dad when he was attacked. Sister Amelie, you pushed those people into committing murder. What? No, that can't be true. The Lord would not use me for such a purpose. But that's what happened, sister. You wrote those notes. And people were murdered because of them. No, I wouldn't. He wouldn't. Those were nothing. His message is about murder. I'm not here. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Ah! Fucking Thomas. Stromly. Shh. It's all right. Father, Thomas, how did you get down here? Tassing is an old place. It's buried many ancient roads and tunnels over the centuries. People walk above the hidden ways every day without even knowing it. Though in truth it was Sister Amelie who rediscovered them first and found this place. Father Thomas, did you? In other circumstances, I would be overjoyed to see you, Andreas. In truth, I'm still happy you are alive, thank God. But I think the occasion of this reunion leaves little to rejoice about. You! You and Sister Amelie were behind all the murders. No, she had no part in this. But the notes, she wrote them. She did, but she did not understand their purpose. I guided her. I told her what to write. To what end? What is the point of all this? Look around you. What do you see? Roman ruins. Look closer. Looks like the statue of St. Moritz from the meadow. And the images of St. Sasha from the shrine. I don't understand. It's St. Moritz and St. Sasha. And Mars and Diana. Saints are the gods? When the Romans left Hassing, their buildings, their temples, their statues remained. Christians settled here three centuries later and found time worn fragments of the imperial grasp. A statue of Mars, Potter, that once watched where the Roman fields stood there, still headless and nameless. The settlers believed it was St. Moritz, who already a legend where they had come from. They found the shrines to Sasha, and not understanding she was an aspect of Diana, believed she was another local saint. So the people turned them into saints? Sanctity and sainthood exist outside of what people believe, Magdalene. People cannot turn someone into a saint any more than they can unmake the divinity of Christ. But they knew the saints and learned local legends of the region and applied them to the figures they found here. No one knew they were Roman gods because there was no account of what the Romans did and left here. Except for the Historia Tassiae. But Historia Tassiae was not known then. Perhaps it had not even been written then. Who knows how, long, knows how long that book had been lost for it made its way to Father Matthias. And you killed him for it. Yes, with poison. No one suspected. He died of poison and no one suspected? It must have been quite subtle. His death was unexpected, but I was the only person he confided in about what he had read in the Historia Tassiae. When Father Matthias learned that there was no evidence of St. Moritz had ever come to Tassing, that the shrine to him in the meadow was in the Statue of Mars and the Romans had existed hundreds of years ago, that St. Sasha was the Roman goddess Diana, he resolved to deal with it. And you resolved to deal with him. Andreas, our people believe in St. Moritz. They believe in the miracles God has worked through his hand. 
and they believe in the legend of Saint Sasha that she helped Moritz and watches over Tassing Still. And that was worth killing the abbot? I believed it was then, yes. If Saint Moritz never came to Tassing, what is in the reliquary? What are the pilgrims coming to see? What does it mean for the people who prayed to him, to Saint Sasha, and believe their prayers were answered? What does it mean for the church that has given people hope, built, fixed like a false star in a dark sky? If the people have reason to doubt the validity of the saints, can they doubt the church? Can they doubt gospel, the word of God? People must have suspected something odd over the years, Father. Suspicion is not proof, especially when no one really wants to know the truth. People have faith in spite of doubt. That is why I have worked to preserve the legends of our saints. You are preserving a lie! I preserved a lie to illuminate greater truth. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. If you believe this, if you truly believe this, eternal life is yours. And saints have walked among us, and their relics work miracles, and they hear our prayers and answer them. And the two that protect this town were never here. They don't need to know that, Andreas. There are times when God feels so far away from us in these mountains. But a peasant in Tassin can stand in the field, look over our valley, and say, St. Moritz was here. God was with us, God, and he is with us still, and he will be with us always. And that is the truth, even if the legend of St. Moritz is a lie. So many people have died because of what you've done. I know this is hard to believe, but I was trying to save lives to prevent death. But one murder didn't solve the problem, did it? Because one day Baron Rothvogel rode into town with another copy of Historia Tassier. A copy he promised to give to the abbot so Kirsau could come to terms with the past. And if Father Gernot had read its contents, he'd be facing the same danger you saw in Father Matthias. In retrospect, given how Father Gernot chose to run the abbey, my fears may have been unfounded. Do you think he would have cared? Whether he cared or not, I think the abbot would have been more concerned with preserving the abbey. But there was also the baron himself. From his provocations, he surely would have told people eventually. But then why Otto? Certainly didn't have anything to do with the story of Tassier. He couldn't even read. And the end is murder provoked Peter and the others into destroying the abbey. I never thought that would happen. I underestimated Peter's anger and the peasants' frustration. You seem to have a difficult time reading people, Father. It appears that way, yes. I was trying to prevent Otto from showing people what he found. What he found was when he was helping to dig the foundation of the Rothhaus. Something from our pagan ancestors? No, not quite so old. What he found was a stone head. The missing head of the statue in the meadow, the statue of the shrine of St. Moritz. How did it wind up over there? The most likely culprits are rain, floods, and time. Black Till told me the farmers find old tools and pottery in the fields every year. Yes, and this head remained hidden for centuries. It sat in the soil until Otto found it. And he was going to show everyone that God favored the town with his discovery. What Otto could not know is that our shrine statue was not of St. Moritz. So Otto could not read the words chiseled across the helmet, Mars Potter. The man entrusted with his information, the town priest, could. Yes. He told him to meet you on St. John's Eve at the Rathaus. I could not let him destroy our town's beliefs. And you had poor Sister Amelie write down what you told were her visions, visions she couldn't remember. And deliver them to the dead of night, to Guy, to Hannah, to Martin. So that one of them would murder Otto just as someone murdered Lawrence. What about my father? I'm sorry, Magdalen. I lived next to you my whole life. How could you? None of this was easy for me. I always thought I was doing what needed to be done. Was it because of the mural? Yes. Klaus pursued the project with determination of a guilty man doing penance. He kept digging and digging for answers about Tassing Pass, Kier's house Pass. I was afraid that sooner or later he would find out about more at Sasha. This place, everything. So you tried to kill him? No, I tried to scare him. First with the note, but he ignored it. I thought it ransacked the workshop it would scare him off. I didn't expect him to come down so quickly. It was just an accident. It wasn't an accident. You almost killed him. I, I know. So what are you going to do now? Kill me? Kill Magdalen? No, of course not. I have neither the means nor the will to do so. But even if I can't stop you from telling people what I've done, I can stop them from finding this place. No, Father Thomas, stop. It's too late for me, but I can still take Tassing's secrets with me. Father, you're going to kill us all. You're going to kill Amelie. Then leave and take her with you. You can tell the townsfolk what you want. If you stay here, we'll die together. Father, Thomas, this is suicide. I believe it is an act of faith. And if it's not, I'm prepared to answer for it. Father! Go!
Damn. Well then. Are you alright? I think so. You? In truth, no, but I survived. And so did she. You must have heard that at the Golden Hand. The entire church collapsing? I hope so. What are we going to tell them? What do you mean? About this. About everything. Why wouldn't we just tell them the truth? For the same reason Father Thomas hid it. So we should reward what he did, all the people he's hurt? Is it better to punish the people of Tassing? What good will it do to tell everyone about St. Moritz and St. Sasha? Maybe Father Thomas is right about that, if nothing else. Maybe it would break their faith. I suppose the people here have had things broken enough. You included. I'm sorry, Magdalene. It isn't fair. None of this is. We found out who did all this, who attacked my dad. But it's not like we can bring anyone back. We cannot do any of the hurt he caused. Father Thomas won't be able to hurt anyone else. Maybe he never would have. Alright, we don't have to tell them. About the saints, the Romans, any of it. No, I don't know. As much as it hurts, they should hear the truth. Are you sure? No, but I think still think it's what needs to be done. Then we'll tell them. Good. We should get Sister Amelie someplace warm. We can take her to my house. She'll probably have some explaining to do. Mm, a lot, I think. It's been a long time coming. I'm glad you didn't die in that fire. I am too. I think... Oh, you didn't tell them? <laughs> Merry Christmas, Andreas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> yep. H happy holidays down here in the uh, in the Roman ruins. Oh, man. This will be interesting, then. Oh. Magdalene, you made it back. Andreas and Sister Amelie and I all made it back. Sister Amelie? Was she in the church? I had a terrible din and the house shook. Is everything all right? Our neighbors probably think the world is ending, so it could be better. Hmm. Are you all right, Dad? Yes, I'm sorry. Just tired. Sit by me. Tell me what happened. It started in the Roth house. Well, the Rothskeller. Andreas found an old Roman message there that pointed to the Mithraim. Huh. So we went to the aqueduct. The section we found must have been closed off for centuries. We found an old Roman bathhouse. We couldn't go through, so we found our way down to a level under the baths. I think Andreas says it was a hypocost? Andreas got separated from me. I was really afraid I'd lost him, that we'd both gotten lost down there. But then I heard its voice in the distance. I was so relieved. Dad? Oh, shit. Are you still listening? Oh, no! Aww. Oh, man, not Klaus. Oof. Damn. Whoa. Big time skip. Hey, Esther. I know it's hard. I mean, I can only imagine how hard it is. But we will all do our best to make you feel welcome when you get here. The strange thing, this will probably be the last letter I send to you. So I'll end it with my love. Esther. Magdalene? Yes? 
I am sorry to disturb you, but I wanted to let you know that everything is in order. <laughs> well, have fun over there, Steph. The money will be forwarded to you by the rag post as soon as everything is settled. I appreciate it. Please thank him for me. Thank him for everything. Of course, Mr. Struckerin. I didn't know your father well, but I knew he was well regarded by everyone who spoke of him. It seems that Hassing has lost many things in one man. I'm very sorry. Thank you. Good fortune to you. Damn, really did all just fall in the hole there. Jeez. Who are you? Good morning, Mr. Struckran. Are you off soon? Yes, Father. Just saying my last few farewells. Of course. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to know you or your father. God rest his soul. I am too. Don't let those bohemians put any heretical ideas in your head. Once their pernicious seeds take root, they can choke the faith right out of you. I don't know, Father. I've heard they have some interesting ideas. All right, young lady. Just because I'm here doesn't mean you should tease me. God bless you, Father Elias. God bless you in your travels. God bless you as well, Sister Amelie. Are you leaving today? I am, just heading up to the mill in a bit. I'm so sorry for everything that happened. I know, it's all right now. Thank you for helping me. You know what you'll do now? Will you become an anchoress again? I don't know, honestly. Father Elias is trying to help me, but I need to learn to rely on my own judgment a little more. It's going to take a long time to atone for my part in what happened. Perhaps the rest of my life. You were tricked. We all were. Even so, I must make amends. I am writing an account of what happened here. You, as well as I can remember it, anyway. If it's not enough to earn forgiveness, I pray it will at least illuminate this history of great darkness. Good. It's worth remembering. God bless you, Sister Emily. God bless and keep you safe on your travels, Madeline. Oh, uh, hey, Mogs. Otto. I'm really sorry about your dad. He was always nice to me. My mom says he was a good man. He was a good dad. Well, thanks. I should get going. Mogs. Magdalene. You sure you don't want to marry me? It's a little late for that, don't you think? Right. I shouldn't want to spend my life wondering if I should have asked. You know. Look after your mother, Otz. Magdalene, I can't believe you're really leaving. I'll miss you all dearly. The boys will miss you even more. Or his, at least. <laughs> oh, don't tease him. I think he's really having a hard time despite appearances. <laughs> He'll get over me soon enough. Maybe, but you are a special girl, Magdalene Druckerin. I understand why you're leaving. God knows you have a good cause. But Tazin won't be the same without you. Say travels, and God bless you. Are you sure you have everything you need, Magdalene? I think so. Thank you. I made you something to take with you on the road. It's chamomile, cinnamon, and wheat flour. If you're traveling and you're having cramps... I know, I'll use it. Well, Hildegard's recipe just called for chamomile and wheat flour. I added the cinnamon for taste. I'm so sorry about what happened to your father. Thank you. Mother Francisca had us all say prayers for him. And for you as well, when she heard you were leaving. Really, that's so sweet. Please thank her for me. I will. Well, I'll miss you so much, Magdalene. I'll miss you too. Aw. Magdalene, this is it? It is. Time for me to leave. Good. Get out before this cursed town swallows you. Passing will bring you nothing but anguish and misery. Elsa, I hope one day you will find a path out of your sorrow. God willing, though I am doubtful. Stay safe on the road. These are dangerous times. We'll be fine. Look after your family. Paul, Anna, your grandkids still need you. I'll do what I can. They are what little I have left. Without them... Never mind. Godspeed, Magdalene.
Oh, shit. It is Andreas. <laughs> it's like, who is that? Are you sure I look all right? Of course, Andreas. You look perfectly respectable. It's a little worse for wear, but a good sight better than you worm. It's kind of the women to help clean me up. I'm afraid I've forgotten how to look after myself. Some would say you took care of yourself quite admirably. How many men could have survived in a burned-out cellar for the better part of 20 years? Assisting on a discarded rye, no less. I'm sorry about that. Andreas, we already told you. It's all right now. Magdalene. Hello, Magdalene. Are you off soon? Hello, yes. I'm riding with your flower to Mittenwald and then down the Isar. Sorry to see you go, Magdalene. But I hope Prague is everything you dreamed of. If it's half the city Esther describes, I'm sure I'll love it. It was a wonder last time I saw it. You have a chance to make a life of your own there. God knows I've squandered so much of mine. Use the time you have and use it well. I will. I don't know how, but I will. I wish she could have seen it, Andreas. I know. He would have loved it. I hope so. I know so. It's kind of you to say. You only need words of encouragement, and besides, it's the truth. Magdalene, I wanted to ask you something about the mural before you go. Hmm? I thought it was supposed to cover the whole wall. Why did you leave a section blank? For the future. This history is going to stop in passing the moment I roll down the road. I think your wagon is about to leave. Oh, it is. Hardly feels like enough time. Thank you for everything you did for me, for my family. God bless you, Andreas Molly. Heading off with Voxlov. Andreas? Are you alright? I'm lost. That's alright. You're welcome to stay with us for as long as you need. Besides, you can't leave yet. The children require your expertise. Oh. They're off on the mill, the walkway. Let's have ready when you're done. Just remember, you're always welcome in our home, Andreas. Thank you. Ah, doodle time. What did the mural look like? Oh, I think we're seeing it now. I think we're in the Roth house. Yeah, we're in the Roth house. Oh, man.
it is, yeah. Mars and Sasha mural. Heck, what happened to Voxlaw there? What the heck? Damn. That was so fucking good. Woo! God damn. Well, that was a cool fucking game to kick off 2023 with. Sweet. Crank this up here. Oh, man. Yeah, it is. I really wonder. That, that, it, there's there's so many things. Like, so many different little changes. Like, I mean, clearly the overall, like, arching story would probably be pretty similar, but... Like, it'd be interesting to see. I'm sure, like, looking through, like, the achievements for this game, I'm sure there's little things that you can get from, you know, some of the various branches and things like that. I'll have to look through those and see what, uh... See what stuff there is and like fuck around with those. All right. Well, there we have it. Edmund. Well, I believe Steph said they were start starting up a stream, so we're gonna go over and raid them. But we'll be back later as well for our usual Sunday night raid sesh. So let's see here. Loads up. Come on. Twitch. Hmm. There it goes. I don't know why that took so long. Okay. So, let's go raid. the game. Sweet. Well, if you're interested in more 14, well, Steph's doing 14. Um, so you can, of course, stick over at Steph, because I'm sure she'll probably be going through the raid as well. But we'll be back as well later, so have a good one. Bye!